Cross-platform frameworks enable a developer to write an application once and compile it into a native app for multiple different platforms. In this episode, we'll talk about some of the most popular mobile cross-platform frameworks. Welcome to Copec Explained Software, the podcast where we make computing intelligible. In a previous episode that I'll link to in the show notes, we talked about some of the major differences between web apps and native apps, and when it's best to build a web app and when it's best to build a native app. We alluded to the idea of cross-platform frameworks, and in this episode we're going to expand on cross-platform frameworks a lot more, specifically in the realm of mobile apps. How does our discussion of cross-platform frameworks relate to our previous discussion of web apps versus native apps? Well, it's really somewhere in between. You get the performance of a native app to some extent. It's better than a web app. It's not quite as performant as you'd be in a single platform native app. So you're somewhere in between, but you're certainly a lot more performant than your typical web app. You decrease the total amount of code that you have to write. You're still gonna have to probably write a bit of code that's platform specific, especially if your app is very complex, but the vast majority of the code will truly be just written once. You might not have access to every API and every hardware device available on each platform, but you're gonna have access to most of them. And you're gonna have access to a lot of platform specific APIs, which you don't typically get through a web app but you're not gonna get access to every bit of hardware and every platform specific API as you would in a single platform native app. And some of these cross-platform frameworks use the native widget set that comes built into the platform. And that's obviously gonna look the same then as a native app that's platform specific. But some of these cross-platform frameworks actually draw their own toolkit. They kind of just get a graphics API and draw all the widgets and that's not quite gonna match perfectly native platform widgets. So cross-platform apps are somewhere in between truly single platform native apps and web apps. They have some of the pros and cons of both of them, but on a lot of these points, they're actually kind of like halfway. We're just gonna talk about mobile apps today, but what are the major cross-platform frameworks in the desktop world? In the desktop world, cross-platform apps have been around forever. Since basically the 80s and 90s when Mac and Windows were duking it out, there have been cross-platform frameworks to make it easy to write an app once and it to be able to be compiled for both Mac and Windows and today Linux as well. The most popular desktop frameworks today are things like Electron, which is really for taking a web app and just compiling it into a desktop app. Um, Things like Qt that can also be used actually for mobile apps and is typically used with C++, but as bindings for Python and other languages as well. And one of the old stalwarts from the mid-1990s is Java and Swing and SWT and AWT and all these and JavaFX and all these different Java frameworks. Java was the original write once run anywhere platform and it's still used to some extent but it's not super popular and it's never been super popular but it's even waned in popularity over the last decade. So I'd say probably in the desktop world Electron QT and the various Java frameworks are top of mind. What are the major cross-platform mobile frameworks today and who created them? The top three cross-platform mobile frameworks today are Xamarin, created by Microsoft, and recently renamed .NET MAUI. It actually started out originally as its own company and as an open source project, and Microsoft purchased it, and they've been evolving it over the years, and its latest incarnation is called .NET MAUI, and it allows you to write in C Sharp using the .NET base class libraries underneath the surface and really write just the GUI once and just compile it as a native app for both iOS and Android, as well as actually Windows and Mac OS as well. Flutter is an offering from Google and it's actually coupled with their Dart language. Dart started out as a language for building web apps. It wasn't really taking off and it found this niche as a language for this cross-platform framework, Flutter. And Flutter's been becoming more and more popular. Being backed by Google, you know it's got some real funding behind it, some real research and development effort. You have to learn the Dart language to use Flutter, but it's a language that is not gonna look that foreign to Java or C-sharp developers. 
And Flutter is being used today in uh, many real-world apps. So it's it's really very modern, really just taken off over the last few years. Out of the three we're talking about, it's actually the newest. And then the last and probably the most popular cross-platform framework today that's popular today is React Native. And React Native was born out of the React project, which is a JavaScript framework that was originally built by Facebook, now known as Meta. And it allows you to actually use web technologies like JavaScript for building your cross-platform app. So we have three different languages here. We have .NET MAUI, otherwise known as Xamarin, using C Sharp. We have Flutter using Dart. And we have React Native using web technologies like JavaScript. And we have three different huge tech companies behind them. Microsoft with .NET MAUI, Google with Flutter, and Meta with React Native. What differentiates one cross-platform framework from another? They differ by both the languages as well as the design philosophies. And let me explain what I mean by that. So when we look at Xamarin, which is now known as .NET MAUI, it's really just building another abstraction layer on top of the native components that are already built into each operating system. So here's how, how .NET MAUI kind of works. You have the native layer, let's say on iOS, you have the iOS SDK, the classes for widgets that Apple has defined. Then you have .NET for iOS, which just is kind of a C-sharp .NET wrapper around the native iOS SDK. And then you have .NET MAUI sitting on top of that. So it's just another abstraction layer on top of the native APIs, but it's directly calling those native APIs. That's a very different approach from Flutter. Flutter basically just gets a canvas on the screen, it gets access to a graphics API, and then it draws all of its own widgets. And it does draw the widgets to look like iOS widgets on iOS and Android widgets on Android, but it's drawing the widgets itself. It's not actually calling into the native class library and using the native widget classes. It's just reinventing them. And that has some pros and cons, but there's a major con there, which is that when updates happen, um, it also needs to be updated to tie into what native widgets are supposed to look like after the operating system underneath gets updated. React Native is using web technologies to a certain extent. It doesn't actually use HTML and CSS like regular React does when you're building a web app. It wraps around native APIs from a background JavaScript process that's communicating constantly between the JavaScript world and the native world. It's a little bit more though on the .NET MAUI side in that it is actually calling native platform APIs. So we might say that Flutter is kind of the odd framework out in that it's kind of drawing its own widgets instead of calling into native APIs like .NET MAUI or React Native. On the other hand, React Native is also using a declarative UI paradigm in the same way that Flutter is. And so there's a lot of built-in kind of binding and functional reactive programming. In fact, React comes from the idea of functional reactive programming, which might be a topic for a whole other episode. But anyway, so the three platforms differ both in terms of what language they use and also in terms of how they interact with native APIs, or in the case of Flutter, don't interact with native APIs for drawing widgets. How popular are cross-platform frameworks? Cross-platform frameworks are very popular. You'll see a lot of job postings looking for developers to use them. You'll see plenty of apps on the App Store that are built using cross-platform frameworks. You might be surprised, though, that the majority of apps today are still built using the native iOS SDK on iOS and the native Android SDK in Kotlin or Java on Android. So most people are still using Swing or Kotlin or Java or Objective-C, and they're not using cross-platform frameworks. And we'll get into in a couple minutes why that is. And that's not to say that, though, if you go on the top 100 apps on the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, you'll certainly find some of them using cross-platform frameworks. But the majority of the top 100 apps are still built using the single platform native SDKs. What are the main reasons to use a cross-platform framework? The main reason to use a cross-platform framework is to save yourself development time and development money. Just like that might be one of the major reasons that you build a web app instead of a native app to begin with, but now maybe you're thinking, you know, I really want it to be a native app. I want it to be on the app stores. Well, this might get you there 
without the cost of developing the same software twice, once for iOS, once for Android. That's obviously gonna save you time, and it's obviously, when you're saving time, it's gonna save you personnel, perhaps. You don't need a separate team, one for iOS, one for Android, or the same developer working basically like two jobs, because it can be quite different building for the two native platforms. And you're also gonna save a lot of time and money if you're using a language that your developers are already familiar with or some of your code is already written in. Let me give you an example. You might use React Native because you're already using React for your web app. And obviously you're gonna be able to reuse a lot of your knowledge, a lot of your JavaScript expertise, building a React Native app if you've already built a React app. Same thing is true with .NET MAUI or what used to be called Xamarin. If you already have the back end of your server written in C Sharp using something like ASP, or you've written a Windows app using C Sharp, your developers are already going to have a step up on learning .NET MAUI that they wouldn't have using Swift on iOS or Kotlin on Android. In the case of Dart with Flutter, it's not quite as clean cut because basically nobody uses Dart outside of Flutter. I, there are some niches, but it's it's not much. So it is learning a whole new language for your developers, but you might be saving on the time of learning both native iOS development with Swift and also learning native Android development with Kotlin. You just have to learn this one thing, or you might just not want to have to write the app twice again. What are the main downsides of using a cross-platform framework? The downsides are actually quite similar to a lot of the downsides of web apps, but not quite as extreme. So there's some performance penalty with these cross-platform frameworks. They're essentially abstraction layers on top of the native platforms. So anytime you have another abstraction layer, there's gonna be some bit of performance cost. While they have more access to native APIs and native hardware than web apps do, they don't have full access in the same way that the native iOS or Android SDKs do, because when Apple or Google comes out with a new feature, of course they first ship it in their own SDKs and it takes a while for it fil to filter down to third-party SDKs. So you won't right away maybe get access to all the latest features or if you do, you might have to write a little bit of glue code yourself uh, that might have to be a little platform specific. It's much better than a web app in that sense, but it's not quite as bleeding edge as when you're building with the native SDKs. And now you're also reliant on a third party. So when you're building an iOS app, you're not just reliant on Apple now, you're also reliant on, let's say, Google in the case of building Flutter and the Flutter team and the updates that they're gonna make. The more dependencies your app has, the more of a headache it can sometimes be or the more that you're tying yourself to potential existential risk. If, for example, Google was to discontinue Flutter, which doesn't seem likely, but of course, you're, you're adding a little bit of risk. And these platforms might not always be as popular as they are now, whereas it doesn't seem like native development really is ever gonna go anywhere. There's been talk about, oh, cross-platform frameworks are gonna take over the world since the iPhone and Android came out in 2007, 2008. But actually, native development has really never gone away. It's never been overtaken by cross-platform development. And so still to this day, the solid bet on what's still gonna be here five years from now is native iOS and native Android development, whereas there have been some cross-platform frameworks that have come and gone. Although React Native, Flutter, and Microsoft's efforts seem here to stay. How should one decide whether or not to use a cross-platform framework? I think when you're deciding whether or not to use one of these cross-platform frameworks, the first thing you should ask yourself is, what are my skills or what are the skills of my team? If your team is already experienced in C-sharp, but it doesn't have any background in Swift or in Kotlin and using the native iOS SDK or the native Android SDK, then using .NET MAUI seems like a really good place to start. Evaluate it, see if it meets your needs. But I think one of the main reasons to use one of these cross-platform frameworks is if the skill set aligns with a skill set that you already have on the team. If you're already building your web app using React, then by all means, start by using React Native. See if it meets your needs before you go through the trouble of building two separate native mobile apps. If you have no expertise in any of them, and you have no expertise in native iOS development or native Android development, then evaluate how much you really need 
platform specific capabilities? How much do you really need the absolute smoothest user experience on both platforms? And how much time and development cost can you sacrifice for that? Do you see cross-platform frameworks replacing native development? I don't see native development with iOS or Android using Swift or Kotlin really ever going away in the foreseeable future because it hasn't so far. There's been plenty of times since the iPhone came out in 2007, Android came out in 2008, and cross-platform frameworks have been around since basically the beginning. And they've never overtaken completely native development. So I think native development is still a very safe bet. That said, cross-platform frameworks, I think, have been growing in popularity over the last few years, but it's not like some kind of exponential curve where they're now just completely displacing native development just using the single-platform SDKs. So I think we would have already seen it by now. You know, 14 years is a long time. And I think that given what history can teach us, probably these are going to remain an alternative not the default. Thanks for listening to us this week. Rebecca, how can people get in touch with us on Twitter? We're at Kopec Explains, K-O-P-E-C-E-X-P-L-A-I-N-S. I want to remind everybody to leave us a rating on your podcast player of choice. Don't forget to follow us. We have a lot of followers now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Appreciate every one of you. Drop us a line. Tell us a topic you're interested in us covering in the future, and we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye.